Well, hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm gonna to do some wintry stamped watercolor. And I'm gonna start with the barn from one of the new releases from Art Impressions. And a lot of people think that the Art Impression stamps all need to have flowers in them, right? Lots and lots of flowers. No, they don't. They can make all kinds of beautiful scenes otherwise for other seasons of the year. And even though we are past Christmas cards, you can still do wintry theme cards because I'm betting we got some winter ahead of us before the spring starts to come in. So I'm gonna make some wintry scenes here. I started by putting some blue and brown on the barn and then stamping it onto a sticky note because I'm gonna make a little mask for it. Turns out I don't need it by the time it's all is said and done, but did that while I had the stamp here and lined up. And I'm gonna paint a little bit of water onto the blue part, which I drew just on the roof so that that would be the snowy part. And then I did the brown on the, the base part of the building so that when I take my water brush and touch it to it, this is a silver brush number eight, then that just kind of moves all that brown color, but it stays in the bottom section, especially since I dried the snow that I wet on the roof, then all of this is not gonna move into the roof, all this brown color. So keep your heat gun handy and that will help you to control things just a little bit when they start going nuts. I tend to use more water than a lot of people sometimes in my stamped watercolor and managing that and knowing how wet something is and whether or not a color is gonna bleed into it is an important thing to figure out. And I will dry that up so that then I can start moving on to the next portion of this, which is to adjust my misty because guess what? There are some new stamps in the new Art Impressions line that are clear, clear stamps. Look at this, there's several of these scenes. This one is the fenced scene. And I'm gonna put my little mask over top of my house to keep that protected. But I'm only putting it there to protect the roof. It doesn't matter for the rest of it. The fence is gonna go in front of it. But if I were trying to keep that roof pure, I would want that mask on there. It turns out I didn't need it because I had aligned it so that it didn't matter. But you can see now I've got this scene. There's a couple different scenes. There's one that has a river in it, one that just has hills, etc. So you can check and see which ones might be most appropriate for you. But I wanted to play with this fence. And I've done the stamping just in blue for right now. I'm going to add brown to it. But doing it in blue allows me to pull some of that blue down from the stamping and create shadows for each one of those posts. So I'm wetting them and then just pulling that color down at an angle. I'll add a little bit more to it later as well. But that helps to establish those, those posts so that there's a light source in the painting. I'm wetting all of the rest of the, the ink that's been stamped from, from the markers and just trying to put in a little bit of snow color elsewhere because snow has more color than you think it does and if you put in some color in your picture you're going to end up with something that looks more realistic and and the snow is going to look whiter when it has something else in it if everything in the picture is practically white then you're going to see nothing because it's going to be white on white here if i put enough blue in here look how much as soon as i added the shadow for the building and then darkened the shadows from the fence, all of a sudden, everything else looks more white because of it and has more interest to it. So I'm now gonna paint a couple of kind of scrubby lines in here to be the grooves for a car or a wagon driving up the road in the snow. They don't have to be even at all, kind of better if they're not, so it looks like crunchy snow. And then taking the color that I've scribbled onto the misty, which is what I'm stamping in, and adding some more color, excuse me, to the mountains. I decided I wanted a little darker something there because it was just feeling so white. So putting that color makes those mountains move into the distance and then the snow is in the foreground. Adding just a little bit more water to put some 
some form to the shadow on that hillside so that there's a little something there. And then dry it all really good so it all stays put. Next, I'm going to restamp just the fence portion. And I did that by wiping off the stamp and only putting brown ink or brown marker on the fence posts themselves so that I could press that down and end up having all of a sudden that detail pop up right in front. And since I knew I was going to do this fence as a really dark brown fence, I didn't have to worry about it going right in front of the house or the barn or whatever that is because it's going to be darker than the barn. This is not dark enough, but if I go and do it again, I re-inked it and stamped again into the wet, all of a sudden everything got darker. It pulled more color off of the stamp because of the moisture there. And then I took my marker, went directly to the paper to add a few more details and, and just kind of increase the contrast in the windows. Now next is the silhouettes. They have these new little people that you can put in scenes. Uh, be careful, stamp them, I guess, on a scrap piece of paper. Make sure they fit size-wise into whatever the scene is that you're putting on. So you don't want like little, I guess you could have something with little mini people in it. Maybe it's a fantastical scene. But I've stamped them first in blue, and then I wanted to stamp them in brown as well. But before I do that, I wanted to get the stamped area wet because I wanted to pull out enough color from the stamp. And when the the paper is a little bit wet there, it's going to just suck more color off the stamp. So I have brown on the top of the people's heads and blue at the bottom. And watch what happens to it once this is dry. Like the little people on this made me so happy because once I start just moving that color around a little bit between them and just letting the water kind of push the color around and it dries, wait till you see what they look like. They're just amazing. I wish I could paint people into my scenes, into my fine art paintings that looked as good as these end up looking. And I gave them shadows going in the same direction as the fence shadows. So they're even kind of going up across that little hillside at a little angle. And then I got out some new trees from Art Impressions. They have these new little trees and they're very tiny so they're going to fit these scenes more. A lot of the other stamps you may have from Art Impressions may be too big. Some of those things are going to be giant and they're going to look huge compared to these little teeny tiny barns. There's also a set of little houses. And so be aware of the scale of what you're using and make sure that that's going to fit so that they look realistic, etc. But you can also, for trees, you can use little foliage and stuff for these. Just use it carefully and test out which one's going to be size that's going to look like a tree. So I used my brush to add a little bit of shadow to the bottoms of the trees and then painted some water into the sky area. And I'm just dropping in that blue color. Not really, you know, trying to be real specific about making scallopy trees, just letting the, the pigment move in the water and just go where it wants to. And it starts looking like clouds. I am going to trim this down so not really too worried about where it ends on either side, but you can decide if you're going to trim it down or if you want to have tape around the edges so you have a nice crisp edge, kind of whatever you're looking for in the card that you're making. But look at those little people. Look how they came out. Isn't that gorgeous how the brown and the blue mix together and they just look like there's a reflection coming up from the snow. I just love that. And here I die cut them with a little detailed die, a little detailed rectangle die, and added a sentiment. I don't even remember what set that was from. This is the one that has the, the little stones and the river, and I added some people and a dog from the silhouette set. This is a totally other set that has a gazebo, and there's a die that goes with it as well. I painted it so that it's a snowy scene, but you can use it all year long. And all of these, of course, I did winter themed. I tried to see if I could make the new rocking chair look like it was covered in snow. And I added a little container with it just because I needed another element in there. And this window has no flowers in it. But I tried to make it look snowy and wintry. And that little grate in front is a dot. A lot of these come with dies now. So you can see them all over on my blogs, little pictures of them. And check them all out. 
and that's about it. That's all I have for you today. I will see you again in another video really soon. Have an awesome day. Go make something beautiful. Bye-bye.